Good evening, and welcome to St. Margaret. We especially greet all visitors and guests who are with us to share in today's liturgy. We ask that you please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. Today's Mass is being offered for all the souls in purgatory. Suffering is real, even for those who are called by God. The prophets, the disciples, and Christians from the very beginning often paid a price for responding to the call. Even choosing to live a gospel life may overwhelm us. Fear is death-dealing, and all great spiritual teachers counsel against it. Jesus often said, do not be afraid. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Fear often can paralyze us from being proclaimers of the word, and specifically its fear of taking risk in our journey of faith. For the times in which we failed to simply go out to do what the Lord commanded us to do, we pause and ask him for his mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Kiri Eleison. Lord, have mercy. Kiri Eleison. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ Eleison. Christ, have mercy. Christ Eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. Bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Lord, in your great love, answer me. has covered my face. To my own kin I have become an outcast, a stranger to the children of my mother. Zeal for your house consumes me, and taunts against you fall on me. Lord, in your great love, Answer me. But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of your favor. In your great mercy, answer me, O God, with your salvation that never fails. Lord, answer for your mercy is kind. In your great compassion, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God's seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, and does not spurn his own in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the seas and everything that moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted where there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs on your head are counted, so do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Poor Jeremy, he's been here for half of his summer already, and by now he's heard from all of our parishioners the top hundred things that he needs to do as a priest, and the hundred and one things he should never do as a priest. But allow me the opportunity to add one to the latter list, because I remember when I was in seminary having the same experience. Uh, people would tell you all these things that you really need to do to be a good one, and the things that you really need to avoid in order to be a good one too. And one parishioner, when I was in seminary, came up to me and said, you know, you need to be able to put your money where your mouth is. Now, I started thinking about that a little bit, and I said, well, I'm a seminarian. I don't have a lot of money right now, so this really isn't going to be all that opportune. But as I went through ministry, and as I later grew up to be a priest, I came to realize there was a particular wisdom to that statement that that parishioner told me so long ago. What I think that parishioner meant was, as a pastor, as a priest, never ask somebody in your congregation to do something that you yourself wouldn't be willing to go ahead and do. 
And I remember that coming front and center, especially when I was first ordained and I was working with our youth in programming. Now, you know, as parishioners, one of the most difficult things for us as priests is to get volunteers to help the ministries happen. Everybody wants the ministry, but nobody wants to be the chief that actually leads the whole thing. So trying to find a leadership is oftentimes a difficult task. And that's especially true in parish schools of religion, to ask volunteers to give up weekend after weekend so that they can teach our young people the fullness of the faith. So I decided when I first got ordained that, well, if I was going to ask parishioners to teach in our PSR program, might as well put my money where my mouth was, right? And I would go ahead and I would teach in the program too. So I decided that I would take not just any class, but I would take the confirmation kids. So we began our PSR year as was usual. Uh, Somewhere at the beginning of it, we ended up having this particular retreat as a way to get the kids sort of involved in it a little bit more. When we started that retreat, you know, it starts as any retreat would. There was an icebreaker. Kids were standing on their heads or whatever they were supposed to do. And then came the meat and potatoes of the entire retreat. We started asking them and dialoguing, talking about why we were there, the sacrament of confirmation. So very directly, I asked them, what is confirmation? And of course, as you can imagine, I got every single response under the sun. One of them raised their hand and said, it's finally time that I get to graduate from church. And I'm thinking, no, that's not really the answer we're looking for. Uh, Another one said, this is the opportunity where I become a full adult in the church. Well, yeah, that's a little bit better. Another one said, well, this is the opportunity for me to basically renew and accept what my mom and dad had promised a long time ago when I was baptized as a kid. And of course, that was probably the most theologically astute answer. And as we kept doing this exercise asking what was confirmation, I noticed one of my kids in the very back of the room, the slug of slugs, I'll call him. Uh, He was sitting there in the corner. He was sort of hunched over like a sack of potatoes, And he had in his hand whatever electronic gizmo he had, be it an iPhone or an Android. He had a cap that was pulled down so you could barely just see his nostrils and his mouth. And I continued to ask and interrogate the entire group that was there until finally I was sort of running out of resources and the little guy in the back knew that I was directing the question to him. Uh, What is exactly confirmation? And then finally he caught my eye. We looked at each other and he gave me an answer. Do you know what it was? Confirmation is a waste of my time. Now, don't be too hard on that little young man because I think in some sense he was prophetic at that particular time. And allow me the opportunity in the homily today to explain just a little bit more. We find ourselves launching back into ordinary time once more. Uh, Easter's over, we just did Corpus Christi and Trinity Sunday, and we find ourselves in the precipice of ordinary time. And every year that it begins right after Easter, no matter what cycle of the lectionary, usually the message is always the same. It's Jesus' excursus on discipleship. So what does Jesus tell us about discipleship? Well, he gives us what I call the instruction manual, if you will. He tells us everything that we need to know in order to be good disciples, because what is he doing? He's preparing the 12 and those who are following him to go out there and to be people of action. So what does he tell them? Well, watch out for traps and snares. It's going to be difficult. You're going to have to carry crosses and all of those difficult things. But he tells them, think of the reward too, because what are the great things they'll be able to do? They'll be able to heal. They'll be able to even raise people from the dead if you can believe those things with faith. That's the instruction manual that he begins to hand over to his apostles. But I wonder if things were a little bit different in the gospel, would any of them have considered any of this a waste of time? The 12, we know what happens with them, right? They take the instruction manual, it's difficult, but they go out there and they preach the good news. They evangelize. They do the good work that's contained in all those instructions that Jesus gave them. But imagine if Peter or Matthew or John would have simply looked at the instruction manual. They had spent all that time with Jesus. They had been preparing for this moment and they finally said, uh, yeah, no, that's too much. 
I'm not going to do any of that stuff. I wonder if they would have considered that entire preparation time simply to be a waste of their time. Now, they go out and they do the message of evangelization, but today's gospel is not just about them being prepared, it's about us being prepared too. Because front and center in today's gospel, Jesus tells us perhaps what is the obstacle of obstacles when it comes to taking the message that we have, the instruction manual, and doing something with it. The biggest obstacle that we often encounter is fear. But even more than that, Jesus is very specific in the type of fear that often keeps us from being effective proclaimers. It's actually the fear of risk, of not really knowing what might happen if we go out there and take the instruction manual and put it into practice. Sound very familiar? Well, for us as a people, as a Christian church, I think it makes an awful lot of sense to hear that gospel and paint discipleship in that particular light. Before coronavirus even started, Think about what was happening in the church, not just the Catholic church, but in all of our Christian churches. You know what happened with attendance? It was going down. Not at St. Margaret, of course, but perhaps in a lot of the other churches that are out there. And why? Well, it could be for a variety of reasons. But dare I say, my little prophet in the back of the confirmation class may have been on to something. People, I think, look at the church and say, this is nothing but a waste of time. And I wonder if there's not some legitimacy, perhaps even about their complaint. I think we need to look at how we define church. What is church for most people? Square walls, this nice little renovated building that we come into. But you remember the old ditty that you learned as a kid. The church isn't a building. The church is you and me. The church is a people. And the problem, I think, sometimes is that as a church... We're stuck in here with the instruction manual, and because of fear, specifically fear of risk, we don't want to go out there and take what Jesus tells us to do and actually do it. Because what are we afraid of? Well, there's so many things. But if we take a risk and we mess up or we fail, we don't want to see the rubbish that's left behind after we've gone out there and taken that calculated risk. So what do we do sometimes? We stay stuck. And if we stay stuck as a church, in the building of the church, what do we become? Waste of time of the gospel message. I want you to think about the times where you have felt God whispering in the back of your mind to go out and do something, but you didn't really do it. And why? Because you were afraid. You were afraid of the risks that were going to be involved. Let me give you a couple of concrete examples that might illustrate. Go back to 2016, awful flood that happened in our community. Me and at the time, Deacon Ryan, were sitting over at the house, kind of scratching our heads, figuring out what in the world are we going to do? And we wanted to do stuff. You know, my mind never actually turns off. I was thinking about all these different things we could do. We were going to be able to house the homeless and provide hot meals and, and feed all these thousands of people. But then the brakes hit on, right? Because the pastor came out. And what was the pastor thinking in his mind? Well, that's a lot of risk involved there. I mean, what if I invite these people to come stay in the hall and they trip on those rocks that we used to have out there in the parking lot? Lawsuits galore at the church in Albany. And we could do a couple of things with that. We can simply say, I got the instruction manual and Jesus is telling me to do this. Or we can actually go about and do it. Not really paying all that much attention to the risk and the fear that's involved. The church sometimes has to take the instruction manual and go out there and not just read it, but put it into action. And think about it when, in terms of the people that we invite in our church. We always say over and over again, we need more young people in our church. That's true, right? We do. But the minute that we get young people in the church, and they tend to be a little bit rambunctious, you know, riding their skateboard up and down the, the wonderful little ramp that we have in the back, or those babies that we invite into church who cry their eyes out in the middle of mass, 
I see parishioners whose head become like the exorcist, right? Turning 360 and they stare at those little babies with death. What are we doing? We're actually taking the message that's in the instruction manual. Jesus is telling us, invite them. But what are we doing? It Squashing it because there's the fear of the unknown, of our mass being complicated, of the risks that we might actually take. You see, I think the good news of the gospel is that Jesus is still alive. Jesus still calls us to be disciples. And unlike all the apostles who had the very limited interaction with Jesus, we got the instruction manual galore. It's found in the sacred scripture. It's found in our tradition. But it's not meant to be kept upon a bookcase. It's alive. We're called to take that particular message and be disciples to go out there to live and breathe despite our fear and despite the calculated risk that we're ultimately invited to take. I go back to that particular opportunity where I had my confirmation class in front of me. And I had the little guy that was in the back as time went on, his heart melted a little bit that day, but then it came time for the confirmation photo and I was standing right by him. Uh, We were lined up to take the big group photo, and before you know it, he suddenly just smiled like a big old Cheshire cat. You could see those white teeth, and there he uttered those words and said, ha-ha, look at me, I'm smiling. I'm like those preachers on television. Give me more money, and I'll save your souls. And I could have took that kid at the moment and just backhanded him one good time, but I didn't because he was prophetic. What was he speaking out about? The fact that sometimes in the church, we get so comfortable with the church that we fail to realize we are the church. That we have to go outside of our comfort zones, outside of the realm of impossibility, get over ourselves and our fears, take risk, and proclaim the gospel, whatever the cost might be. Jesus never said it was going to be easy. Instead, I think I remember him saying, pick up your cross, drag it behind you, And preach the good news the way that I do. Put your money where your mouth is. And ultimately, church might not seem like the biggest waste of time there is out there. As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist today, God is calling us to true discipleship. And what does it mean? Read the instruction manual. But after you get comfortable, don't be afraid. Fear no one or nothing. Take risk. And go and be the church to a world that really needs the church more than it ever has. To proclaim the good news, to give a message of salvation, and to help an ailing people with the wonderful balm of charity and joy and love that's at the very center of that instruction manual that we profess. Because if not, all we'll see is the church numbers continuing to decline Less and less people come within our doors, and more and more people will simply look at it and say, the stuff that you're preaching about, all it is is a big old waste of time. Together we profess our faith in a God who invites us to live out the fullness of our discipleship. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Despite our fears, we take our risk as we place before our God our prayers of petition and of need. For the church, may she persevere in her work to be a prophetic voice, speaking in the light so the world will know God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and all nations, may we work to instill the dignity and respect of all people through listening and reform, bringing justice, equality, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, especially those struggling through the COVID pandemic, as well as all the medical workers on the front lines, may they always have faith in God's love and protection in times of uncertainty and anxiety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the men and women, women serving in our military overseas, may they return surf safely to their families and loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those men called to be fathers, godfathers, grandfathers, or male role models in their families and communities, may they serve with humility, teach with patience, and love with kindness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may we be proud to acknowledge our need and faith in Christ, the gracious gift that inspires us to serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they forever know the salvation that never fails. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we pray for our needs and the intentions of others through Jesus, who acknowledges us before the Father. Help us to be the church, O God, the living witnesses to your salvation in our very midst. Provide the needs that we place before your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. And remember that our collection basket is at the back entryway of the church. Fill it with good and marvelous things. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. 
He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and the saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice. 
that old people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Margaret, St. Thomas, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh, he 
watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears. By the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when songs give place to a sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him, for care he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. Got a couple of announcements for the weekend. Continue to sign up as you have done for the past several weeks and continue to mask and socially distance. Uh, we appreciate all of your generosity in making this transition time a really good one, and we look forward to getting back to normal, whatever that is, sooner than later. Uh, remember that we will have vacation Bible school this year, but it'll be virtual, and we can always use a couple of contributions to make that happen. If you're interested in participating or in contributing, call Lucy or Ansley over 
with the parish office. More details can be found in this weekend's copy of the bulletin. Our ministries are sort of getting back to normal slowly but surely. This week, the Catholic Daughters met. Uh, this coming week, Margaret's men, our all men's ministry, will meet over on Thursday, the 25th of June. We just ask that any participants bring their mask and practice social distancing while they're over in the Hall of Saints. It's also Father's Day weekend, so in a particular way, we honor all of the fathers that are in the church. So could I ask all of our fathers to stand, and we'll ask God's special blessing upon each and every one of you. And for all of us who remain, can I ask you to extend your hands over these fathers as we ask God's blessing upon them. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth, and grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with the spirit of profound respect. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless our fathers, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let's wish them all a very happy Father's Day this weekend. And I wish I could give the normal St. Margaret gift, but of course we can't in the quarantine. So if you didn't get your late Mother's Day, early Father's Day present, the wonderful mask, get those from one of the ushers uh, when you leave the church outside later today, and make sure you wear them appropriately in town so that you can evangelize, be a disciple, at least a disciple of St. Margaret in the meantime. And before Father gives us his final blessing, I'd ask you to join me in a prayer and a blessing for Father Jamin. He will... uh, He'll be having a sur- surgery on Monday, and uh, if all goes well, he'll be back home, or he'll be, he'll be back and be out of the hospital uh, on Monday and hopefully returning to us near the end of the week, um, starting his recovery. So if you would, um, just extend your hand again as well as we give Father a blessing. Good and gracious God, we, we thank you for your servant and our shepherd who has worked tirelessly for us and for you. As he pauses, Lord, to be restored, to be healed, we pray that you free him from any anxiety, that you fill him with your graces, that he turns and trusts in you completely. We pray for those who will be servicing him, Lord, the the doctors and nurses, the, the medical professionals, that you will give them the grace to use their skills to heal him and fully restore him and return him back to us, Lord, very soon. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. We bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all. I appreciate all the prayers and the support this week. Of course, the deacons were very disappointed because they thought that I was on the list, the donor list for a brain. So unfortunately, I won't be getting one of those this week, but regardless, uh, continue to keep me in your prayers. And unfortunately, he won't be having his uh, OCD gland removed either. That's staying in place. (laughs) Actually, I didn't tell you I'm going in to strengthen the OCD gland, so regardless. Let us stand and pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our pledge of sure redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our fathers living still in spite of dungeon fire and sword oh how our hearts beat high with joy whene'er we hear that glorious word faith of our fathers holy faith we will be true to you till death Faith of our mother's daring faith, your word for Christ is love revealed, spreading God's word from pole to pole, making love known and freedom real. Faith of our mother's holy faith, we will be true to you till death.
Take it as it comes, you know. So in life and in death, right? He did, did it his own way.